Corey Perry, playoff superstar for the Dallas Stars. Doesn't win a cup, gets to a final. Corey Perry, playoff superstar for the Montreal Canadiens. Gets to a final, can't win a cup. Who does he lose to twice? Pat Maroon. What's the solution? Join Pat Maroon. And apparently, production and great things happen because Corey Perry, Pat Maroon, in the fourth line of the Tampa Bay Lightning, along with the Tampa Bay Lightning power play, and the Tampa Bay Lightning goaltenders, a few things we called out in our playoff preview before this series that would be key to a Bolts win end up causing a Bolts win. So Florida's rushes, Florida's five-on-five power is shut down by Andre Vasilevsky and the defensive team systems by Tampa Bay. You know what we're going to do? We're going to talk about it. Hello, Florida. (gasps) I'm not a state. I'm a monster. (laughs) I don't know about you, but I love OG Simpsons. So just a little bit of fun back in Florida. I'm not a state. I'm a monster. The Battle of Florida continues here. And it didn't disappoint. 36 shots for the Bolts, 34 shots for the Panthers. I mean, these teams can both punch and counterpunch each other. So there's really two narratives that are going on here and only one is going to survive. The first narrative is what we talked about in our introduction is that you have a guy like Andre Vasilevsky. You have a playoff discipline team that plays good team defense like the Tampa Bay Lightning. You've got a team that knows how to score on the power play, at least right now in the playoffs like the Tampa Bay Lightning. And you got a team that's comfortable playing from behind or without a lead in any game like the Tampa Bay Lightning. And you have a team like the Tampa Bay Lightning that beat a scoring powerhouse like the Toronto Maple Leafs. On the other side of the argument, you have the Florida Panthers, the best five on five team in the NHL, scoring juggernauts above the Toronto Maple Leafs. There's no question about that five on five. You have a team in the Florida Panthers that can score on the rush. You have a team in the Florida Panthers that can score on bunches in you when they're ready to do it. And you have a team like the Florida Panthers that is used to playing a game and just won a series against the Washington Capitals in a similar sense that the Tampa Bay Lightning are trying to do against the Florida Panthers. The Tampa Bay Lightning are trying to drag the Florida Panthers into the muck, into the center, clog up the middle, keep the shots to the outside, play physical. Don't worry about scoring five on five. We'll get them on the power play. Just keep it close for the game. You keep these games close and Tampa Bay is going to edge them out. That's their theory. But Florida was able to finally crack that against the Washington Capitals. So those are the two narratives. Is Florida going to crack this just like they did Washington? Because it is is very hard to hold back scoring. It's extremely difficult to do. And that's what I saw in today's game. I saw a team like Florida have a lot of chances on the rush. They use their speed. They use their talent. Carter Verhage looked faster than ever. That guy is the MVP for the Panthers right now in terms of the offensive punch. Anthony Duclair scores on the first goal. They get Andre Vasilevsky moving across the Royal Road with one of those tape-to-tape beautiful cross-ice passes. That's how you got to beat the big guy. The other narrative for Florida is that they finally cracked the code on the power play and they score going one for 22. And then the goal is taken away because it was never truly a goal. Great challenge by John Cooper. It hit the mesh. And it is back to over 22 at that point. And that is going to be a major factor for Florida in this series if they cannot find a way to score in the power play. I don't think that the Tampa Bay Lightning or the Washington Capitals, I don't think you can get through this team without scoring on the power play. So that is why I say Florida needs to do it. But I could be wrong. I have seen teams prove us wrong before. Once the Boston Bruins in 2011, they scored no power play goals till the finals. And Florida got through Washington with no power play goals. Both are very rare scenarios. Tampa Bay, big stories. It is the team depth in the defense. We talked about the fact that Corey Perry, Pat Maroon, and Bellamare are just an excellent, like, they're just excellent. You've heard me say on this channel many times, I don't really care about fourth lines, to be honest. Not in the playoffs, because you're going to run your horses in your top nine. But when you're Tampa and you're so deep, this fourth line isn't just going to get five minutes a game and hope they don't get scored on. Especially when you got Maroon and Perry out there. Perry does his job today. He ends up with two points. He's excellent on the power play. I mean, what an addition and a pickup for the Tampa Bay Lightning. You look at Corey Perry's last three years at league minimum, league minimum, and then $1 million. I cannot believe people did not give this guy a three by two for $6 million three years ago when he first started this journey. But 
I don't know what's going on with NHL GMs, but it's found money for the Tampa Bay Lightning. Let's put this game in pictures and talk about the story of this game, shall we? Let's take a look at the shot chances here. I like these heat maps better than what you see on other websites. So you can see that the Tampa Bay Lightning had a lot of high danger chances in the middle, and this is what they're going to do. They're going to wear you down. They're going to penetrate the middle of the ice. And then here's that Tampa Bay team defense. You can see the goals here. A lot of the ones that are down low ended up coming either on the power play or on the rush. But for the most part, Tampa did a good job keeping a lot of shots to the outside and not allowing a lot of shots to bunch up. But both teams were able to fairly penetrate the middle with a reasonable amount of chances. If you go over here to moneypuck.com, they have one of the most interesting heat maps there are on this. You can actually go and highlight right over who got the shot, what the chances of scoring. So if you want to be a nerd like me, you can go ahead and check in here and you can see here a rebound goal had an 86% chance of scoring. So that goal there by Ross Colton had a massive chance of scoring that's why it ends up having the blue dot so if you really want to nerd out and see how your team did in terms of chances you can go over here or you can just tune in to hot garbage sports and hear coach Ryan D break it down and tell you and speaking of that why don't you give coach Ryan D a big thumbs up we've been going hard through the playoffs here thumbs up likes comments they go a super long way for us and hey if you want to join our membership page it's down below it's a new thing to youtube you can join the coaches staff coaches staff is a great way to get priority access to coach ryan d or just show your support and appreciation for the channel so you can go down there below you can be like these beauties here who have signed up for lower bowl access they got the best tickets on the ice we appreciate every single one of you for being there they get shout outs on videos or you can even choose the executive suites and have coach ryan d make you a video that we end up uploading to youtube thank Thanking you for it. So that's our membership page. And if membership's not your deal, we also have super thanks down below if you're looking for a one time super thumbs up to Coach Ryan D. It's all monetized, but it gets reinvested into the channel back into all of you. And hey, just being here, being you, being your awesome self, commenting and leaving thumbs up and subscribes, which are all free, more than helpful enough to this channel. So thanks for being here. Thanks for viewing. Thanks for helping us grow 2,000 subscribers in two weeks. We love you all. The other cool thing about moneypuck.com is if you take a look at the deserved win meter <laughs> this is hilarious. I love it. Tampa Bay statistically comes out of this game 66.1% of the time out of 1,000 simulations. So what do they do? They go ahead. They put in these scoring chances that you see down here below. They put in the nerd stats and they say, look, Florida had a chance in this game, but Tampa Bay wins this game and they deserved to win this game because they would have won 600 and 61 games out of a thousand if this exact scenario was played a thousand times. Bummer news here for Chernak as he ends up taking a puck right off the back. You can see it here. He ends up getting his skate caught and he toe picks. So we love the fact that he went there and made this block shot. And you can see if he doesn't make this block shot, there's a lot of open net there. Not saying Vasilevsky wouldn't have had it, but that is too much open net. This should have been a goal for Florida. Would have changed the entire game. Cernak takes it off the back. He doesn't end up returning. I suspect, based on where the padding is and where this puck hits, it actually ends up hitting him in the kidneys. That's a very painful place. So I don't think this is just a bruise. Players as tough as him don't usually just leave games for this. He'll probably be back next game with some kind of kidney guard or pad back there. But in the meantime, let's hope he is okay and has a somewhat comfortable night because that looked like a very painful block. And getting hit in the back near the kidneys there is just not an entertaining time. It's not good for anybody. If you've ever been hit in the kidneys, you know. Oh, oh, it can be a long couple days. That first goal by Anthony Duclair was an absolute beauty. Take a look at this. The Florida Panthers leave what we call four up in the zone. So there's only one defender that ends up waiting back. You have one, two, three, and our defenseman's going to go ahead and activate in. This is how the Florida Panthers generate so much damage on the rush. This is why they're the one of the best five on five scoring teams ever in the NHL. Tampa Bay does a really good job recovering here, but if I move my head, you'll see that Florida ends up here with a four on four, and it's all about widening the zone here. Remember, if you're brand new to this channel, we have this invisible royal road that crosses the ice. You're looking to get pucks across this road. If you can get pucks across this road, you can start moving your goalie 180 degrees, and by doing that, it's an absolutely brutal angle change. It doesn't matter if you're 6'5", and you're the best goalie in the NHL, you're going to let pucks in when you have to do it. It's a high percentage scoring chance. And you can see Florida ends up with a little bit of a delay. So I don't love guys when they end up just laying down like this. I do like to see a little bit of pressure. And the back checkers here, like Kalorn, 
have to shoulder check and they can't get puck, caught puck watching, puck watching, puck watching, puck watching. So three players here, if we get rid of all this purple, you can see they're all staring at the puck. No one is shoulder checking, looking for both Florida Panther players that are open. And it is going to be Duclair that ends up getting it across the Royal Road. He's a good Canadian boy. That puck ends up feeding on his stick and bang. Look, Vasilevsky almost had it. That's incredible. This is how deadly Vasilevsky is. Take a look here. You can see he's made the post-to-post -post play, but Duclair is smart. He waits, and he's able to force it into the opening between his blocker and his pad there. Desperation saved by the goalie. Almost. Not enough. Florida's favorite son, Mackenzie Wieger, gets two minutes for hooking. Uh, you don't like those hooking calls, but they are what they are. I don't think they're that bad compared to trips and slashes. Sometimes hooks just result from playing defense. So Wieger sometimes I feel is a polarizing guy down there in the Sunshine State. I like him, but definitely some people think he stick handles, doesn't move the puck as well as he should. I think he's a top tier defenseman, but he ends up going into the box for this one. That costs them and leads to the Corey Perry goal. The interesting thing to note here is before the goal, while they are short, Florida has a scoring chance here. It's a two on one. Corey Perry on a beautiful back check. What you end up seeing is them going wide. Here's what I don't like. I don't like giving up the puck short. I know there's an opportunity to score here. I know you have them beat, but I feel unless you have a 100% chance to get that puck at the net, I think it's better to rag the puck around the boards, not throw it around the boards, skate it around the boards or pivot into the corner and continue to kill time because all that ends up happening when you make plays like this is you catch two guys down low. Then that allows a team like Tampa Bay to have a four on two going the other way. And those are very difficult to stop. So remember, Perry's going to score this goal. He's also the first back checker back. Cooch, thanks for back checking, buddy. Go looking for more goals. If I'm Kucherov or his coach, I'm telling him to stride a little bit quicker here. You got to pick up the puck. But because he's gliding back, he actually ends up turning it over. But the main point of this is for Florida or other teams here, there is an opportunity to score and there's two schools of thought, pressure, 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 and try to score on here. But we all know when you don't score an offensive rush at the best of times, five on five, it turns around and goes into the back of your net. When you're doing it four on five, it definitely becomes an even worse opportunity and Tampa Bay exploits and this changes the entire game. So you see that puck ends up bouncing out there and he's gone. It's Kucherov. So because he's hanging out back there, he's looking for pucks. That back check is fine at this point because he's picked it up. I still don't like it. I want you to take a couple more hard strides, but whatever. Cooch is gone. And now you can see, take a look at the top of your screen. Both Florida players are working their butts off to get back. Two Tampa Bay Lightning players are caught back there. So you're going to end up with a three on two here with Kucherov entering the zone. And what makes the three on two so challenging is no one can challenge him here at the line. Both players have to back in. This is proper strategy now. If you are odd man rushed as defense, you have to back in and you got to wait for your help that's coming. So you don't want to ideally on a penalty kill, allow them to get the line so easily. The first line of defense is not letting them enter the zone. And that sounds really obvious, but believe it or not, it is quite tactically difficult to zone entry while you have a power play. The players make it look easy, but that is the place power plays are won and lost is zone entry. It is so hard with how good penalty killers are and strategies are these days. So when you let them get a free zone entry like this, it's kind of like giving them a gift. Kucherov ends up making them look stupid. So when you have a four on two, what should you do? Let Kucherov dance all alone. Why not, right? Kuch ends up skating in two strides. He's so beautiful. I mean, God, what a player. Bobrovsky bites on it. There's nothing he can do about this. He ends up finding Corey Perry. And remember, Corey Perry starts the back check, saves the goal on one end, and now he's wide open here. And a goal scorer like Perry, he may be on the fourth line, but you don't lose your hands. He ends up putting this in. Corey Perry is money. Line four in this series is going to matter. And why is it going to matter? Because frankly, they're so deep in the top nine. I think Florida's a little bit deeper, but they're so deep in the top nine nine that they could cancel each other out at any time. So when you go ahead and you put out the Bellamare line here against the Hornquist line, I think this is a mismatch. When you take a look at the fact that you got Maroon, Perry and Bellamare, that's huge. We talk about face-off theory here all the time. Face-off theory is huge. You want your centerman here tying up the puck. You want a neutral draw or a draw one back to your defender or a draw one back to your player. Now, because the centerman here from Florida is left-handed, he has an advantage here to win this back. But we always talk about this naked wall here. If both players are going to give up the wall, it's net neutral. And you're looking for a clean win because a 50-50 puck that ends up coming out here, both players have an equal shot at it. However, 
if you want to take advantage of this as a defender, I actually think you need to sneak your defender up here. I think you can go ahead and you can create a mismatch or an advantage by moving your defender closer to the hash mark. I think these players are so fast that if you end up winning the draw back here, what stops your defender from taking two strides, picking it up and getting out of there? There's no way he's going to lose the race to that puck. So I don't like the fact that the defender is just going to sit back here by himself. I've never liked that. You can see as that puck's dropped, it's sitting right here, and this is a net neutral draw again. So it's a 50-50 tie. Belmare does a really great job. And Maroon, because he's so big and strong, just ends up cutting in here and bullying his way in. By bullying his way in, he's going to pick up this loose puck, and he's going to be able to get it over to Belmare for a goal. Maroon picks up that puck, ends up chipping it through the feet to Belmare. It goes over to Corey Perry. Corey Perry takes a quick shot on net. You got to love what Perry's going to do. So you got two huge advantages there. Pat Maroon gets that loose puck. Bellamare, beautiful tie-up. Corey Perry, beautiful shot. That puck comes out on a rebound. It's in the back of the net before you know it. And it all starts with face-off theory. Everything starts with face-off theory. We talk about this. You can score on the power play. You can score on the rush. And you can score off the face-off. So the fact that they're able to score off the face-off here on a line mismatch, a better four-on-four -four line is huge. It is all about where you're going to line up your players and what your assignment is off a draw. And then after that, it's sheer will versus skill. Who is going to get that loose puck? And there you have it. I think it's the nuances of the game that took this for the Tampa Bay Lightning. I thought Florida looked faster. I think Florida is a better rush team. I think Florida is very good at scoring goals and they'll get their swagger back. But Tampa Bay, we talked about it going in. They do so many little things right because they're a veteran team, right? They go ahead. Their face offs are tight. Their forward checking is tight. Their zone entry is tight. Their back checking is tight. Their team systems and structures are great, but it takes more than team systems and structures. John Cooper can only draw up the plays. The players need to identify what we call individual tactics. When do I pressure? When do I contain? When do I forecheck? When do I back off? What stick combination should I be using? Should I be stick lifting? Should I be cross checking? Should I be stick pressing? Which angle should I take at the puck? What should I do off a draw? Should I make the hit or should I turn back and get into the play? These are all tactics. There's literally a page of like 300 of these and players need to know which tactic to use in which situation in the fastest game on earth. That's what makes the veteran savvy of the Tampa Bay Lightning so good. They are better at choosing any one of those 300 tactics. Think of your favorite RPG game, not Pokemon. It's only got four attacks. Think of one that has an endless amount of options and you have to pick the punch and counter punch. That's what these players are doing in real time in nanoseconds. They're picking what tactic and what route, what angle, what am I going to use in order to be effective in this play by reading and reacting and nobody does it better than the Tampa Bay Lightning. So they take the Florida Panthers to school today on tactics and on execution, but don't count the Panthers out of this one. The big cats, like I said, can score in bunches. They got the deeper roster. They fell into this hole against the Washington Capitals. They climbed their way out. So, hey, we'll end up seeing what happens. It's only one game. Florida's got to focus on taking the next game. If Tampa Bay takes the next game, though, in Florida, that is definitely a team on the ropes. It's not over, but it's a team on the ropes. Tampa Bay has done their job. All they had to do was take one on the road. When you take the first one on the road, a lot of pressure is off because you only need to win the next three at home. You don't have to win any more in Florida if you're Tampa Bay. So thanks for being here, guys. Subscribe, join. We'll catch you for the Avs and Blues, which has been a great game so far.